Hey kids, let's break down an image. But before I do that, I wanna talk about why I was in Peru. So back in the day, I used to teach two or three photo workshops a year. These were not workshops that talked about cameras or lenses or technology or software because that's boring and nobody cares. These are workshops that talked about actual imagery, building essays, talking about process, what worked, what didn't, et cetera. It was a lot of fun. One of these workshops was always in Latin America. Why Latin America? Thanks for asking. I love Latin culture. I've been to Mexico a million times, Guatemala, Panama, Peru, Brazil, Uruguay, etc. I really love going down there. Peru in particular is interesting because it's about four countries in one. You have the ocean, you have the desert, you have the cities, and you have the almighty Andes, which are truly remarkable. If you haven't been into the Andes, I highly recommend it. But there's one more point I want to make before we break this image down. Even though this wasn't that long ago, my workshop era, I was firmly entrenched in the analog era. When I got on a plane to go to Peru, I had two Leicas, two lenses, and a giant bag of film. I did not even have a battery with me. I didn't travel with a laptop, and I had a mobile phone. I think it was a Blackberry, and I would put it in my bag once I got to Peru, and I would turn it off and not look at it for a couple of weeks. It was dreamy. Now when I get on a flight, I look like I work at Radio Shack. I have chargers and batteries and drives and laptops, and it's just a mess. So a part of me kind of misses this analog era and thinks he may go back to it at some point. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Let's break down the image. All right, let's break down this image. Now, hopefully you can see me. This is my face. Uh, I am using the built-in camera, and today I'm using the built-in microphone. I'm for, I've foregone my fancy microphone out of pure laziness. So I want to break down this image. We're in the plaza in Cusco. There are four things about this. I've got them written down in my trusty notebook why I think this picture works. Now, before I go any further, you might look at this picture and say, I can't stand it. I don't like it. You're a hack. It doesn't work. Totally fine, I don't care. I think it works and here's why. The first thing you will notice is up here above the tree line, above the ridge line, in this giant area here, there's absolutely no detail. That's because this is a cloudy day. So there is just one enormous bank of clouds over the top of my head. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important number one because I am using a Leica rangefinder, which has a maximum shutter speed of 1000 which on a sunny day can be very limiting, but on a cloudy day it gives you a lot more room to play around, especially when you're gonna use a slow shutter speed and pan along with the subject. But in addition, this giant cloud area here at the top is providing these massive areas of reflected, soft reflected light. That's very key because if we zoom in here to these, to these two women in the center, you'll notice very slight separation here on their faces and around the outside of their bodies. That is because I have this wonderful diffused light source at the top. That's number one, the first reason why I think this image works. Now, the second reason why I think this works is as you will see, these two women are obviously moving right to left, but you've got, look at these lines right here, right here, right here, and more importantly, right here. And these lines are basically allowing you, everything is pointing directly at these women. You've also got another little containment line here in the background. All of these are almost subconsciously allowing you or forcing you to look exactly where I want you to look. Now, I had nothing to do with that. That's the luck of the draw that the plaza in Cusco is built this way. So don't think this was Uncle Dano like saying, oh, hey, I'm going to build this plaza real quick and then utilize those lines. That's point number two. Point number three, you will hear me say so many times you'll probably get sick of me, which is layering. This was shot with a 35 millimeter lens on a Leica M4. I've got a foreground, I've got a midground, I've got a strange little background here on this layer, and then I've got my true background back here. And what you might not notice is that this group right here, these are all people that are sitting there that are lined up waiting for something to happen in the plaza. I can't remember exactly what's supposed to happen, but it will eventually happen. That's point number three. Point number four is that, like I mentioned, I'm in the plaza in Cusco. There are thousands of people waiting around for something to happen. I have this going on. I have this, this, this. Behind me, which you can't see back here, uh, are also hundreds, if not thousands of people. It is a chaotic scene. And the goal of any photographer in the words of a uh, older photographer who helped me when I got started, you're looking for clarity within the clutter of society. And that's what this is. So I first saw these women when they were very far off camera to the right. 
So I saw them coming, and they looked as if they weren't really concerned about what was going to happen in the plaza. They were just simply going about the, their daily work. But I knew that they were going to be crossing right in this area. So this is a very important part that you may not think about. So because I had a cloudy day, I slowed my shutter speed down to either an eighth or a fifteenth of a second, which is about the limit of what I can handhold and expect to get relative sharpness in an image. So I slowed the shutter speed down, and then I balanced it out with the aperture. But what I did is I put my left foot aiming in this direction, and my right foot aiming in this direction, and I actually physically spun my upper body back towards the women, and then as they moved and progressed across the scene, I spun my upper body in the same exact speed that they were moving, but I kept my feet here and here because I knew I would be making the photograph at that point. That's really key. If I had both of my feet turn to the right or turn to the left, I would have been in a very awkward position when I actually made the image. And that basically gives you less stability. And as you can see, and this may be a part of the image that people like or don't like, these women are not perfectly sharp. And I am totally okay with that because they are sharp enough. You can tell exactly what's going on. Now I also got lucky here because there's a little bit of sharpness happening here with the bag this woman's leg, and these two girls are holding hands, which I actually really kind of like as well. I think that's a nice little moment. So in a nutshell, that's why I think this, this image works. I think adding pan blur to an image uh, can oftentimes lend a little bit of energy to a photograph that it may not have on its own. Had I just shot this at 125th of a second, I don't think it would have had the same impact that it does. So keep these kind of things in mind. Uh, motion is a, is a low percentage, a low success rate way of making pictures, but who cares? If you get one, what else do you need? Good luck, keep snapping. I hope you enjoyed that breakdown and I hope you enjoy this series because I really want to continue this. And the reason I want to continue it is when I look at the grand scheme of photography these days, there's a lot of what I would call noise around the periphery. But when photographers get together and they talk about photography, this is the kind of things that they talk about. They talk about light and timing and composition and the breakdown of those elements, the ability to recognize those elements in the field and to get better and better as they practice their craft of photography. So I hope you enjoy it because I plan on doing a heck of a lot more of these. Good luck and keep snapping.